Welcome to another day of walking with Jesus as we continue to walk through the Gospel of Luke. And as we continue to look at the parable of the prodigal son and consider the Father's love for us, today we're going to uh, look at our hearts. Um, every day at 11 o'clock in the morning, I get a notification from a prayer app that I have that reminds me to check my heart. Um, to pray a prayer, Lord, search me and try me and see if there be any offensive way in me and lead me in paths of righteousness or in the paths of everlasting life for your name's sake. So every day I get that and every day I need that. I don't know about you, but it's easy to become complacent. It's easy to become self-deceptive, and it's easy, really easy to become critical of others, especially of our brothers and sisters in Christ or those that we walk with in this world who don't know Jesus at all, and we can't stand it, <laughs> especially when good things seem to happen on their behalf, and we really struggle with that. And so today, the parable, um, we're going to look at the older son and I don't know if you will feel this way by the time I get done or not, but I I just keep asking, Lord, please don't let me be an older son. Don't let me be the older son in this parable. The older son in this parable was probably representative of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the scribes, the religious leaders that were around Jesus. Um, but as Christians in this world, we can end up being like them. So verse 25 of Luke 15 now his older brother, now remember, I just need to remind you that in this story, the younger son has basically said to the dad, I wish you were dead. Give me half of everything that belongs to me now, or give me everything that, that I'll get when you die. Give it to me now. I don't want to wait for you to die. And then he goes off to a foreign country. He squanders it. He ends up destitute and homeless. He's feeding pigs. He comes to his senses, realizes that he should go back home and just be a servant of his father, no longer worthy to be a son. But the father accepts him, runs to meet him, welcomes him with open arms, a, a perfect picture of love and grace and mercy extended. And the son is clothed and he's, the fatted calf has been slain and they're having a party. Well, now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And the servant said to him, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he, the older brother, was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you, and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, and I can almost hear the sneer, when this son of yours came, not my brother, <laughs> but who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad. For this, your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. I hope that we can develop the heart of the Father, that we rejoice when anyone comes back into right relationship, comes to life, as it were, and not be angry because we didn't get, in our opinion, our just dues. You know, I have heard it said numerous times, Pastor, how could God do this to me? Or how could God allow this in my life? I have served him faithfully. I have obeyed him. And this, it's just not fair. Well, <clears throat> as my father-in-laws uh, want to say, whoever said life would be fair. <laughs> But, you know, we need to get over ourselves and rejoice 
Whenever anyone comes into right relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ the Son, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and if God chooses to throw a party for them when they come back, even though we don't seem to get it, and even though we haven't had a party ourselves, let us rejoice with them. Let us rejoice that that which was dead is now alive, that which was lost is now found, that we have a new brother or sister to share eternity with, and help us not ever to hold anyone away from the grace, the good news, and the love of God. Well, God bless you as you walk with Jesus today. May it be a great day.